Okay. This week's movie is The Monuments Men. The Monuments Men is the World War II film directed by George Clooney about the men tasked by the U.S. government to save an art throughout Europe that was being systematically stolen and or destroyed by the Nazis. This film is uh, directed and starring George Clooney. It also stars Matt Damon, Bill Murray, John Goodman, and Bob Balaban. There are a couple of other characters on their team. The actors are people I don't know. There's a French guy. There's a British guy. There's a snowplow outside. And there's a uh, young private who is a uh, German Jew who escaped from Nazi Germany right before the beginning of the Third Reich. Um, the film is about George Clooney's character is an art guy who gets the ear of the President of, of the United States and convinces him that in saving Europe from the Nazis, we're losing all of the art, all of the history, all of the culture, and that's kind of what we're fighting for, and convinces the president to put together a team of art specialists to go over there and try and save this stuff. Um, your villains are, of course, the Nazis, and the Nazi branch of the SS that was specifically tasked with stealing all this art for Hitler. Um, the movie uses some nice human touches to convey, frankly, how evil the Nazis were. They don't show, you know, big torture scenes and, and you know, all kinds of horrible um, big images. They just give you small moments to let you know that these people were really, really, really nasty. Um, and also, the if you're an art lover, the Nazis are just portrayed as being really spiteful. It's a historical truth, but they would destroy anything that they couldn't take and keep. Um, your uh, mentor in this film, for George Clooney's character, the mentor is essentially the president of the United States, who at this point in the war would have been Truman, um, as he's the guy that's asked the moral question, is it really worth it to put lives on the line just to protect art? And, of course, the answer that this film gives is yes, yes, it is. Um, the other characters as a mentor, really George Clooney is the mentor. He's the person that vocalizes everything that they're fighting for, how important the art is, and so forth. Um, for allies... Basically, you have the Allies, the actual, you know, American, British, French military. Um, they're sometime allies because, for the most part, they don't like the idea of the Monuments Men because these are people who are risking the lives of soldiers who have, frankly, better shit to do than save paintings, you know, and risk their lives doing it. And... A lot of the COs are not on board with the program. Um, also, you have the French resistance. You have a few art curators in Europe and so forth. Those are your allies. The enemies are some of the same people for the reasons I just mentioned. You know, I don't want to risk my boys' lives, you know, to protect a couple of paintings. I don't want you to tell me where I can and can't bomb. I need to win the war. Um, you also have the Russians because... The Russians had their own team, and their team wasn't getting the art back to return it to its rightful owners. The Russians were taking the art for themselves, and so they're sort of, you know, obstacle enemies. There's a race against time thing going on here. Um, who's going to get to the art first? Will it be the Nazis with their flamethrowers, the Americans with their uh, intention to return everything? or the Russians with their intention to keep everything. 
Uh, the upside of this film is that it's universally well acted. It is a very well acted movie. It is a drama, not an action movie. Um, and it tells the story of an important part of history that is often untold. It's not, you know, a great big battle. It's not a, what you would generally think of as a, a cinematic spectacle. So nobody's really told the story in this way before so it's kind of important that the story does get told it's got some pretty funny moments it's got some really heartfelt moments um so there's your upside the downside however is that this is a big story there's a lot going on the story has a lot of moving parts and because these moving parts are literally all over the map all over the map of europe um the story is told and it, it it's spread over a long period of time, about two, three years. Um, what happens is the story is told in really in the form of several anecdotes. It's very episodic, almost like this should have been a mini series instead of a film. And the anecdotes are arranged in chronological order, but they're not really linked strongly in narrative form. In other words, it's just this happened and then this happened and this happened and then this happened. And it did happen in chronological order, but it's not joined together by a strong uh, story. There's no real story here other than let's save the art. And, you know, other people are trying to stop us from doing that. And so... The film doesn't focus on any one incident, and there are things in this story that could have been the incident. They could have made it a smaller, more intimate movie, or they could have made it a huge, big, epic, I don't know, miniseries, but they tried to split the difference, and it doesn't really work. Um, also, while this film does a good job in making you feel the passion of the men for the art that they're saving... The film does not really make you feel the passion for the art itself that these men are feeling. And that leaves this movie with the feeling that the stakes just aren't high enough. Um, you get the feeling that these men feel that what they were risking their lives for was worth risking their lives for. But you don't get the feeling that it was worth risking anybody else's lives. You don't get the feeling, you do get the feeling that the CEOs of the Allies who are like, no, I'm, I'm not going to risk lives by supporting this effort. You get the feeling that those guys are right. You get the feeling that, you know what, um, you guys do what you got to do, but I'm going to go fight the war. What you're after isn't big enough for me. And the stakes just are so low that it keeps this movie a long way away from being as epic as it feels like it should have been. Um, ultimately, in the end, I had fun with this movie. I enjoyed the movie. Um, I think it's a story that people should know, but it's only really three stars just because of how disjointed it was. It was so disconnected. Um, there's no real story, just a bunch of episodes that happened to the same people. So... Three stars, The Monuments Men. I recommend it, but probably, you know, when it shows up on Netflix or Amazon, I wouldn't really go see it in theaters.